everyone and welcome back to my channel. So recently I put out a video with my review and a little sew along of the Sahara Bralette by Ruby's Bras. I saw some people in the comments have some questions about some of the other views, so I thought I'd put out two additional videos today that cover view B and view C. So this video will be covering view B, which is the solid version. Uh, the solid version is a little bit easier if you're new to bra making because it's a single layer. There's no lining, so the construction method is a lot easier. And because the construction is pretty significantly different than what I've shown in previous videos, I thought it was worthwhile to do another video showing going through it. This pattern covers a wide range of sizes from a rib cage size 24 inches to 46 inches and cup sizes AA through L. To find out your size, you're going to need two measurements. The pattern designer recommends taking your measurements with a bra on. The first one is going to be your rib cage. This is right underneath all of your breast tissue. Make sure that your, your measuring tape is sort of parallel to the floor, goes all the way around. That's going to be your rib cage measurement. In my case, mine is a 32. Based on the last bra that I made, I felt like I wanted the band to be a little bit tighter. So I'm going to be making a size 30 today instead of a 32. The second measurement you need is your full bust. So that's going around the fullest portion of your bust, wherever that may be. Again, do this with a bra on. You want to make sure that your measuring tape is parallel to the floor. And in my case, I get a 36. So the difference between 32 and 36 is four inches, which means I will be making a size C. The materials I'll be using today is a micro dual flex kit from Bra Builders. Bra Builders custom dies kits for the Sahara Bralette, so it's going to have everything that you need to make the pattern. And I've got mine in a custom legacy color, which is called Burnished Copper, which is a beautiful, dark, rusty orange. At the end of this video, I'll go ahead and put the solid version of this bra on and show you how it fits on me. Of course, this wasn't something I was really willing to do with the bra tool because I didn't want to get monetized or you know, anything showing. But certainly with the solid version, everything's a little bit more PC. So stay tuned for the end of the video to see that. So let's move down onto my sewing table and get started sewing. So first up, let's take a look at our pattern pieces. We're only gonna have four pattern pieces for today's bra. I'm going to admit this strap piece because it's not necessary for my bust size. So I'm going to be doing a fully elastic strap as another option for something you could do. And it's a little bit easier because I do find that kind of fiddly. So we have two cup pieces, the outer cup and the inner cup. So you want to make sure you print out the one that corresponds to your size. I'm a cup size C, so that's what I printed out. From what I can tell, there's no difference in the cup pattern pieces between the different views. Um, the only reason she has multiples printed are multiples in the pattern. So for instance, this is for the bra tool one and it shows the tool lines or the stretch lines going in both directions because you would cut it both ways. Whereas this uh, staple fabric one only shows the green line going in one direction, but the pattern pieces themselves are the same. So if you're looking to save some trees, um, you don't necessarily have to print out the cut pieces for each view. In addition to the cut pieces, we have the front frame piece. Again, I'm gonna be using the waistband view because I find that's really, really comfortable for me. Um, so I have just you know, folded it up to where I need it to be so that I can still reuse this paper later on the road. But we do have the waistband, the fold over option, and the long line option, all as different ways that you can construct this bra. And then lastly, you need to get your back band piece. I'm going to be going down the size in the rib cage from the last one that I've made. So last time I did a 32C, this time I'm making a 30C. So a slightly different back band piece, again, with the different lengths, depending on which view you're making, the waistband, the fold over option, or the long line option. So I've cut all of these out in my fabrics over here, and we can take a look at that. So this is much simpler in terms of fabric cutting out because the entire bra is a single layer. So we have our outer and inner cut pieces. I've cut two of each because I do have two different cups that I need to fill. So that's done. Then I have one cut out of my front frame piece here and two of my back band pieces cut out here. The back band material that I'm using is a medium weight power net, so you can see it's kind of stretchy. And then for the cups and the front frame, this is a micro duoplex. One thing I should note that at least in my size, I had plenty of material left over. 
So I've already cut out all my pattern pieces, right? And I have plenty of back band material and plenty of micro duotex left over. I could probably get a, a second bra out of this. So if that's something that you're interested in, so it does give you the option of adding a second finishing set with it. So you just need the elastics and stuff, but not any more of the material. And that's something to consider. And then the last thing to consider before we start constructing is just what you'll need in your machine as you're moving forward. So Micro Duoplex is a wonderful, soft, buttery material. It's super strong. Uh, it doesn't uh, unravel or anything like that. So you can leave sort of like exposed seam allowances um, and it's not gonna be an issue. It is a little bit tricky to sew if you're new to sewing. So some things that can help you along the way. First off is getting some sew fine thread. So this is made by Superior Threads. And if you're purchasing from Bra Builders, she does have an option where you can ask her to send along thread that is a close match to your material because she is custom dyeing all of these. So that's what I've gone ahead and done here. So I do have some sofine thread. This works particularly well with the micro duoplex. I have less sort of like catching and snagging. It makes things go a little bit smoother. In terms of needles, I'll be using my Microtex needles, but I'll be using size 8012. This is a little bit smaller than the needles. I typically use my Microtex needles and normally pick the 90s. I think it's 9014, but for this material, I would recommend the 8012. It goes along a little bit smoother. So with all of that out of the way, let's get started on sewing this together. So I'm gonna just start by looking at my cut pieces. So I have my outers and my inners. I can tell which one's the outers because they're slightly wider. So I'm gonna take one outer and one inner. I do wanna make sure that I have the material, the right side facing up and it looks like a do. I'm gonna put these two together and we're going to pin along these two curved edges. So just laying these on top of each other, matching up my notch marks in the center of that cup. And then pinning it outwards. Okay, so now I have both of my cup pieces pinned together. You can see if you're using this solid view, it's a lot simpler because you're just not dealing with as many layers of fabric. So it might be something that's a little bit more approachable for a beginner. The downside of it is you will have some exposed seam allowances on the inside. So, you know, a little, little give and a little take. So now that I have both of these pinned together, I'm gonna go ahead and take this over to my sheen. I'm gonna sew with a straight stitch at a quarter of an inch along that curved pinned edge on both of these cups, and I'll come back to you. So now we have both of the cups sewn. We can go ahead and open them out. The next step is to top stitch them to get them a little bit more secured and nice looking. So I'm gonna push all of my seam allowances to the outer cup side. Remember that's the side that's a little bit wider. So push all of the seam allowances going towards that side. And then you wanna go ahead and top stitch from the top of your bra at about an eighth of an inch away from your original seam line. So here I've done my top stitching, like I said, an eighth an inch away from the original seam line and then an eighth of an inch away from that as well. This helps to really secure that seam and make sure it's nice and strong and sort of like tacks down all of that excess seam allowance on the inside. So this is an unlined version, unlined cup. So we're, these are gonna just hang out inside here. But like I said, the micro duoplex doesn't unravel at all, so it's not really an issue. And it's a really soft material. It's just not quite as a professional finish as I generally do in my bras. So with those two cups top stitched, the next step on them is going to be covering the neckline edge with some fold over elastic. So in sewing the fold over elastic, just like I did in the raw tool version, you have an option of a shiny side and sort of a dull side. I think I'm gonna go with the shiny side today. I don't do it very often, but I think in this particular color, I think the shiny looks nice. I like to do this in a single pass. So with the fold over elastic, you can see like a center mark or center line. Um, and I like to line the edge of my bra cup with that center line, fold it over top, and then sew with a zigzag stitch. If you're concerned about doing this in a single pass, you can always just line it up with that, that center line. Sew with the longest basing stitch you have available, and then do a second pass again, uh, folding it closed. 
So when we're doing this, we do want to leave a tail up at the top point of the cup. I'm going to leave about, I don't know, two inches. Sounds good. And so I'm going to take this over to my machine and use the zigzag stitch as specified in the pattern. So now we have the two neckline edges of the cup finished. If you're a larger bust size, I would highly recommend following the pattern and stabilizing this neckline edge and the underarm edge of the cup. At my size, I don't think it matters very much, and so I'm not going to bother with that here. So that is looking nice and clean and finished. The next step is going to be to insert it, insert both of the cups into the bottom frame piece here. So in the last video that I did, I did the alternative method, uh, which sort of sandwiched the cups in between a lining and an outer layer. It's a lot more difficult. So this time around, I'm gonna take a nod from the cups themselves and go with the original method that she has for putting the cups into the bra band. It's a little bit simpler, a little bit easier for beginners and not as much futzing around. So the first thing I'm gonna do is locate the point in the center front where everything's gonna match up. So keep in mind, right, that we have a quarter of an inch seam allowance on there. So it's going to be dropped down just a little bit. So you can sort of put your pattern piece on top and then just locate that point where the seam allowance ends. I find this helps me just to like give me a landmarker for where I'm going with on my cups. So I'm gonna take my first cup, making sure they have them the right way around, right? We, knew, we know that the full over edge is going to be the center front. So seeing how they fit in there, okay, and then flip it upside down. I'm going to align the edge, that full over edge, with that little dot that I put in there with my, my pen. And I just used a friction pen, something that, that is, um, it's, it's on there permanently, but you won't see it after you like wear it. You, your body heat will sort of make that invisible. Okay, so once I have myself pinned in the center front, I'm gonna go ahead and line up my center notch mark on my bottom band with that sort of like cup seam. That's my second land marker. And then you can just sort of pin in between. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and come back to you. So now that I have that all pinned into place, I'm gonna go ahead and do the second cup at the same time. So just like we did the first time around, we want to sort of have our cup band sitting down, our frame sitting down like this, making sure we have the cup oriented the right way, then flip it around to the bottom. We're going to align the edge of this fold of our elastic with that point that we've drawn in. So now I'm just going to take this over to my machine. I'm going to sew with a straight stitch at a quarter of an inch just along all of those cur pinned edges, making sure to go really slow at the center front here so that you're not sewing through more things than you think you are because that can easily happen. I'm also going to sew a couple times over that point just to make sure that it's doubly secure. So now the cups have been sewn in and I've gone over that corner a couple of times. You can see when we flip the cups out to the outside, we do get a nice, clean, sharp corner in the front there that just looks really nice. Then the last thing we're gonna do while we're working on the front of the bra is just to top stitch again along this seam. I'm gonna push all of my cup seam allowances down towards the bottom of the bra. And so just like we did with the cups, add an eighth of an inch away from that original seam line to just sort of secure all of those seam allowances into place and help it lay a little bit flatter. Okay, so I've opted to go ahead with a double line of stitching around here, just like I did with the cups, so it has a consistent look. Um, you can see on the inside that it really just, it's not as clean of a finish, but it's still perfectly serviceable, but you do s sort of see those seam allowances on the inside. So now what we're going to do with the front of the bra finished is go ahead and put our um, back band pieces on. So I want to align the straight edge of the back band piece, so not the one that has a sort of strap attention, extension, but the straight edge along with the straight edge of my bra on either side. I'm gonna sew this with a straight stitch at a quarter of an inch, fold it out, and then top stitch it just to hold everything in place, just like we've done with the cups in the band frame itself.
And here's what it looks like once that has been attached and top stitched into place. So obviously this back band section is stretchy, whereas the front of the bra is going to be stable and firmly hold you into place. Next, I think I'm gonna finish my underarm edge over here. And again, I'm gonna be pick up using this fold over elastic, the same one we used for the neckline. I'm gonna start at the back band and work my way up towards the point in the cup. Once I get to the point in the cup, I want both of these to sort of like sit side by side to sort of make a thickened strap piece. I think it'll look a little bit, I think once I finish and show you what it looks like, it'll make a little bit more sense. So now I've gone ahead and finished the underarm side. This is what the strap points look like. You can see how it sort of just like smooshes together once it reaches that top point and they sort of go along side by side. That gives us a wider uh, point from which to attach our rings on later on and it gives us a little bit nicer of a finish. So that is the underarm side. Now we can go ahead and finish up the bottom of the band. Again, I've selected the wide waistband elastic because I think that's my favorite finish. I really like how it looks and feels um, and Bra Builders does offer that as an option to add on to your Sahara kit. So turning around the bra to the inside, right? We're gonna see all of those seam allowances. That's how we know we've got the inside. We're gonna take our wide waistband elastic and apply it along the bottom here. We want the bottom edge of the elastic to align with the bottom edge of the bra itself. We're gonna sew this on with a zigzag stitch a half an inch from this bottom edge here. Now I have it sewn on to the inside of the bra. Before I do the final stitching, I am gonna trim off all of my excess fabric here just to remove some of that bulk. Now we can swing around that wide band elastic to the front of the bra. I'm gonna secure this with the same zigzag stitch, this time going along the inside edge of the elastic. That will secure it nicely and you should just sort of like hit right under where that cup seam finishes. Here's what the bra looks like once that is applied on. This is from the outside. And from the inside, you have a nice clean finished edge. I find this really smooth against my body, so I like how that turns out. So I'm gonna work on the straps next. So I'm gonna set this bra aside for a second. As I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna be doing a fully elastic strap. This is not in the pattern, but it's something that I have a preference for. So for me, I tend to like my straps about 18 inches long. Coincidentally, that is just as much strap material as Bra Builders has provided in the kit. So I'm just gonna cut my strap in half. So now I have two that are equal length. Now Bra Builders has provided a little bit of extra um, micro duoplex in the finishing kit. This is intended to use with your non stretch straps. I'm just not going to use it for my particular bra. So you need to locate your rings and sliders. With the Sahara kit, it comes with four rings and two sliders. We don't need all of those rings because we're doing all elastic straps. So we're just gonna need two rings. Also, if you're buying just a, a non-Sahara specific kit, they tend to just come with two rings. So this is a good option to do if that's what you've done. So I'm gonna pick up the slider. The slider looks like a elongated figure eight. I want to hold my strap with the right side of the strap or the shiny side facing up. And I'm gonna go up through the bottom on the left-hand side of my slider. Up and over that center bar and then come back down. So it should look like that if you've done it correctly. Just fold the end piece in a little bit and then we're gonna secure it back and forth. I just use a straight stitch and I'm gonna do that for both of my straps. So now the slider has been attached to the strap. I should mention that if you're interested in doing the non-stretch straps, I have done that in my previous video for view A and I will go ahead and then link that up in the I cards above. So the next step is to take the ring and you wanna thread the ring onto the sort of free end of your strap, so the one that doesn't have the slider onto it. 
highly recommend doing this to both of your straps. I cannot tell you how many times I've made a bra and realized that I forgot to put my ring on one of the straps. So once the ring is put into place, we're gonna turn it bound to the wrong side of the strap. So this is the side that isn't shiny facing up. And I'm gonna go up through the right side of my slider and back down on the left side. So now you should have a ring and the slider on there and the slider will allow you to adjust your strap to any length you deem necessary. So now it's time to attach the straps to the bra, but, but before we do, we need to check to make sure that we have the right height for our hook and eye. Um, and this one looks pretty good. I think I just need to trim it ever so slightly. Okay, looking good on that side. And looking good on that side. But obviously, if you need to cut down If your bra is too big for your hook and eye, so too much space here, you can always sort of like trim down the scoop to whatever size you need it to be. That's highly adjustable, but it's something that you need to do right now before we attach the straps on. So I'm gonna attach the straps to that curve. And I'm gonna use the same zigzag stitch that we've been using the entire time. And I'm gonna go along both edges of my straps to secure it into place. I'm using the side that's flat that doesn't have any of the hardware on it. All the hardware should be on the other side of the strap. So here's what it looks like once that's, so here's what it looks like once that strap is put into place. The stitching along either side. So I have the bra sitting face up, so the right side facing towards me. And if I go all the way to the right hand side of the bra, so right sides up, right hand side of the bra, that's gonna be where I put my eyes. So one thing that Rohi recommends, which I thought was such a cool idea and really gives you a nice finish, you sort of open up that pocket of the hook and eye. I do kind of have to rip it a little bit, but it's fine. So I'm gonna open up that pocket I'm just going to pin it out of the way for now so that I don't get it in my way. And then I'm going to put my hook and eye under, or then I'm going to put my eyes underneath the bra and align the edge of the bra up with that fold line on my hook and eye. Then I'm going to take a straight stitch and sew this into position just like this. Make sure you, you stitch far enough over that you avoid any of those metal parts. Now I've sewn that into place and it's nice and firm and it was very easy for me to tell where things should be and keeping everything organized. So now I can take this pin out and push the flap back over the end of my bra and go at it again with another straight stitch, again going fairly close to the edge of the, the eye itself. You don't really have to worry about positioning it anymore because it's already attached and firmly where you need it to be. I think this gives a much nicer finish and I'm really excited to learn this technique. So that's all I'm gonna do with my eyes here. In the pattern book, Ruhi has a really cool idea about putting uh, cut and sew foam along the back of the hook and eye, which can help if you're sort of irritated by it or you find this is a pressure point on you. It doesn't really bother me, so I'm not gonna do it. But again, another really interesting technique that would be great to try. So now I'm gonna go ahead and move to the other side of the bra and put on my hooks. So with my hooks, I want the bra facing wrong side up. So all of my seam allowances are showing now. And I want my hooks facing up when the bra is the wrong side up. So for this guy, you're gonna have to do it in a single pass because it won't look very pretty if you do the two passes. But basically, you just shove that hook onto the end there and then sew with a straight stitch along the folded edge. And here's what it looks like once those have been attached. The last and final step is going to be attaching the straps to the front of the bra. Making sure the strap goes up and around your body or over your shoulder like it normally would. Then we're gonna take these sort of extensions that we added in the beginning and thread them through our ring. And then fold them down. Now we're gonna secure this by going back and forth over that extension to secure the strap into place and doing that on both sides. 
then our bra will be finished. And now we have our finished Sahara bra. I think this burnished copper color just looks absolutely extraordinary and I love it. Hopefully you can tell that the solid version or view B of the Sahara bra is a little bit easier in terms of construction because we're not worrying about linings or covering our seams or anything like that. So it might be much more approachable for somebody who is new to bra making. So here's what the finished bra looks like. Again, this is without me making any alterations. Looking at it, I do think there's probably one more thing that I wanna change and that's to raise up the back band just because I have a little bit extra fluff back here that I want to sort of corral. Uh, Ruby's Bras has a great video that gives you five different sort of fitting tips if you're having some issues getting this bra fitting you perfectly. So you can see uh, that I get a lot of full coverage, like nothing showing here. Um, it's very supportive. And because it has this sort of solid underband here, I do get some projection difference between my rib cage and my bust, which is something that I don't normally get in a bralette pattern. Um, I love this. I think the micro duoplex, I just can't stop touching it. It's really soft. It's like wearing just a soft little bunny or something like that. So I highly recommend checking out some micro duoplex if you're interested in that. And again, you can see with this wide waistband elastic, I get a nice firm support without any sort of digging in because that pressure is spread across a wider width. Hopefully everyone has enjoyed this video of the Sahara Bralette. If you like more intense sew along, something that shows really close up versions of the sewing machine, I highly recommend checking out Ruby's Bras sew along pattern because it's really thorough and really well done. I'll link that in the description box below. And if I have any cards left, I will link it up above. Take care, everyone. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.